I would add um, that according to the sources that I have, that is the missionary accounts, reports, what they felt was that there were, yes, indeed, native religions in India, but the problem is that maybe they were not the ones that we think of uh, today. Like, for instance, the case of uh, the Jesuit Roberto Nobili in the first half of the 17th century, what he saw in Madurai was something different from Hinduism. He saw sects, he saw Vajnava, he saw Shaivas, Shaivites, he saw Jains, Buddhist, atheist also. So, and he thought that these were native, but he also thought that many of them had resemblances, similarities with the other schools of thought or religious schools in Europe or in the Mediterranean world. Like, for instance, the belief in uh, reincarnation, metempsychosis, he thought that it was something uh, similar, very similar to the Pythagoric belief. And in order to fight that, because he thought, of course it was totally incompatible with Christianity, that belief, he asked uh, his confriars in Europe to send treatises, Latin treatises, against Pythagora, in order to fight, in the dispute, uh, this kind of beliefs. So I would say that the, the answer is complex, but to some extent I would say yes, there are, in nat at least from the point of view of the missionaries, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying mine, there were native um, religions, but they were different from the ones that we would say today. Definitely there was nothing like Hinduism for them. Today, today it's, it's very relevant, of course. It's relevant for political reasons, uh, for the political discourses about who is Indian and who is not. Uh, there are, of course, political sectors who are willing to say that uh, being Indian is being Hindu, and if you're not Hindu, you're not Indian. So it is very relevant. The problem is that it is also constructed. It is uh, ideological. So scholarly, from a sc could we say that we can address the, the problem from a pure scholarly point of view? And I'm not sure about that, because uh, whatever is our scientific gaze is always predetermined by political reasons, either progressive, conservative, whatever. So there is always an agenda of some kind. But definitely is relevant. I wouldn't say that it's something that we can stop speaking about. There are some interesting features of this conference, uh, also comparing with others I have been uh, able to attend in the past. Um, uh, the audience is a very, very interested and prepared audience uh, with many questions and trying to find some elements for a solution here. And that's uh, quite interesting. Not always it happens. And the quality of the speakers, uh, the fact that there is a conspicuous number of European uh, scholars and young scholars, that's most interesting, coming from Belgium, for instance, and not only, together with a wide range of Indian scholars on almost all kinds of subjects, not only religious studies, history, anthropology, ethnography, but I've been speaking with uh, experts of ecology, uh, psy psychology and so on. I think this is a very interesting and stimulating way of addressing this kind of issues. Uh, it is a, is a highly scholarly conference, but interdisciplinary and very sensitive to, the. I would say, also the political and social meanings of the discussions that we are having. is not auto-referential, it's not an ivory tower, and uh, I think this is a, a very good element. And I really I wish all the best to this cluster, this five-year cluster. I think that, uh, I hope that it will be possible to have a, really a five-year a five cluster of conferences because uh, could provide and could challenge really our uh, commonsensical, I would say, understanding of uh, Hinduism and also, I would say, caste, which is not in the title, but is uh, coming very often in all the panels. Thank you. Thank you.